The Bad Boys are back for the fourth installment of the franchise, obviously called Bad Boys for Life. Oh wait, no, that's what they stupidly called the third one. This one's called Bad Boys, Ride or Die. Dumb naming conventions aside, how is this one? I'm going to tell you about it right now. Before I do a spoiler-free review on Bad Boys Forever, which it's also not called, feel free to slowly get off the ground while a Michael Bay-style camera spins around you in slow motion and you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of these movie reviews. Let's talk about this. Martin, damn, Gina, Lawrence, and Will, keep my wife's name out of your mouth, Smith, are back. And these cops are breaking more laws than ever before. They're jaywalking, they're speeding, they're kind of stealing at points. It's a lot. They're breaking a lot of laws. But they're focused on the bigger fish. And the big fish in this story swims all the way to the top. There are crooked cops within the precinct, so it's up to Mike Lowry and Marcus whatever his last name is, job to figure out who's doing the bad deeds. Done dirt cheap. ACDC reference, subscribe. This storyline and a lot of the characters are gonna carry over from the third movie that I completely forgot about after seeing it in theaters. You wanna talk about a forgettable movie. Bad Boys 3 is that film. Not terrible, just kind of there all around. This one's far more memorable. Do I think it's better than the original two directed by Michael Bay? Uh... Probably not, although I haven't seen those in quite a long time. What I will say is the creativity is back. We have absolutely insane camera shots. There's drones flying over the place. There's POV cameras. Will Smith has a rig on him so he can do the first person gun perspective. It looks pretty damn cool and they don't overuse it very much, which I appreciate. And speaking of Smith, we have to talk about the Fresh Prince in the room. I know there's a good chunk of people that aren't going to see this movie because of him and that disgusting display a few years ago when he slapped the shit out of Chris Rock live in front of millions of people. I have always had a system where I separate the art from the artist. On occasion, it's really hard to do so. This is one of those occasions because we saw it play out. We visually witnessed it happen. And although some people will be like, oh, good for him standing up for his... No, it was fucking ridiculous. It was bullshit. It was low class and it was an insult to comics everywhere, especially when it was such a tame joke to begin with. It was a borderline compliment if you listen to the whole thing in context. Regardless, it was tough watching the first hour or so of this movie because it's ingrained in me now. When I see Smith, I instantly jump to the awards and to that awful situation. I just think so little of the person that it's hard to even get on board watching one of his films. That said, there's a lot of people that work on these movies. Hundreds, if not thousands. So you're, you're not necessarily supporting one individual at the end of the day. And once again, might I add, if we're going to start taking stances on these types of things, then you better not be wearing name brand shoes or owning an iPhone or going to certain restaurants because there's always trash at the top. There are always douchebags running these companies or they're doing a lot of shady stuff behind the scenes. Now, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Let's get that out of the way and talk about the film because that's what I do here. This is a spoiler free review. All I'll say is the plot really leads itself well to these organic situations where we have our two leads kicking ass. There's even a couple moments where they're not involved and those are honestly the highlights of the film. One stars Mike Lowry's kid. Another one features Marcus's son and that to me is the best moment of the picture. You could go to this movie based on that one scene alone and I think you'd be pretty satisfied with your purchase. He goes full blown Navy SEAL John Wick style through the house taking out bad guys. <laughs> Pretty much what I just did. I just saved you a ticket. The action in this movie is freaking stellar, and I think the second half of the movie just all around is far better than the first. And by that I mean the second half isn't just more action packed, it's more serious. The first act is borderline Looney Tunes. It's a cartoon show. 
Martin Lawrence is so over the top, it almost felt like he was acting in a Big Mama's House movie rather than a Bad Boys film. It gets really silly. And some people are going to be fine with that. I was kind of checking out and thinking, wow, we're, we're so far gone in this franchise. But it does come back together. And speaking of Looney, some of the storyline revolving around Lawrence's character gets way out there. I wasn't expecting a Black Panther-esque dream sequence, but that's basically what they do. And it's, it's wild stuff. If you are a fan of the Bad Boys movies and you liked all three, I cannot imagine going into this one and being disappointed. It's got everything. A lot of humor, tons of action, creative camera shots, something I haven't been seeing a lot of lately. Most movies nowadays are pretty stock camera angles. They're, they know what they're doing at this point. There's no frills, there's no excitement. But here with Bad Boys, they're having fun. This director's putting that camera in cupboards. He's putting it on the holster of the gun. Everything you can think of, there's a camera involved somehow. Music is popping. We got that main theme song. Dan, 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 dan. Bam, 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 dan, dan, dan. This is rated up for violence. I think this is probably the most violent of them so far in terms of blood and just sort of the situations they get in. There's also some uh, adult talk. No sexual activity in this one, but there's a scene at a strip club. No nudity that I recall. If there is, it's, it's very scant. But Tiffany Haydish makes an appearance for a couple minutes, and what comes out of her mouth is definitely not something your 10-year-old's uh, probably going to want to hear. Let's put it this way. When Tiffany enters the picture, maybe that's when you dip out with the kids. Go get a refill on the soda. Go get another popcorn. Okay, you come back in, it'll be done. There'll be none the wiser. Overall, this two hour movie is a worthy chapter in the Bad Boys saga. Something that probably could have ended a long time ago, but they still have it. They're still singing the theme song. They're still making me believe they can do some of this ridiculous shit that's taking place. They have some younger crew in them that gives them a spring in their step. I think this is a worthy installment. It's easily a, a nice way to end the franchise, but let's be honest, if it makes even a dollar, they're gonna keep churning them out. As far as negatives, again, I just think that first half is a bit rough. It's edited a little weird. There's scenes that just don't really need to be there. It's overly silly. We could have serioused it up a little bit, just a little bit, and maybe shorten that runtime by about 10 minutes. We would have had a nice ass movie. As it stands, two hours, it goes by decently quick, but uh, yeah, there's definitely room for editing here and, and getting rid of some of those jokes that just don't work. All right, those are my thoughts. Let me know if you saw Bad Boys Ride or Die, not Bad Boys Forever or Bad Boys for Life or Bad Boys with a four pun that they should have done. God damn it, Hollywood, why do you do this to me every time? Let me know. Please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like the video, share all that garbage, and hopefully I see you next time. I scan, dan, 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 dan. A bam 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 bam.